Hey guys, this is Materi, and this is the second part of my sound design tutorial. And in this one, we're going to be going over the uh, layout of Massive and what everything does. I have a tutorial like this in my advanced dubstep tutorial, but I want to go over it a little bit more, like a little bit more in depth, and hopefully help you guys understand it better. So Massive is incredibly easy. It's like a wavetable subtractive synthesis, which um, wavetables are all these things. They're just sounds. Um, they're like between two different um, uh, waves. They like morph in between each other. And you could hear that clearly between like the square and the saw wave. So I'll just show you guys real quick how it morphs from a, saw, a square wave which is on the left, and a saw wave, which is on the right, so. See how that just like morphs from a square to saw? That's just one wavetable. <clears throat> um, subtractive synthesis just means that you have filters, which can cut away certain frequencies. Um, so like a low pass will cut away all the high frequencies thus called a low pass, letting only the low frequencies pass. And the four just means that for every one you get four off or something. Um, it's, it's just, it makes it more like harsh as compared to the two. So like, you could hear how that cuts off the highs. And also high pass which is the second big one, uh, just lets the highs pass, obviously. Um, it cuts off the lows. So that's really just a quick overview of subtractive synthesis and wavetable synthesis. So when you, com uh, when you combine them, it's just, uh, you, you can do a lot of stuff. A lot of synthesizers now have uh, subtractive synth synthesis in them. So they just have like the filters in them. So you should be used to that. But if you're not, um, filters are really useful. So in Massive, we have this really simple layout. It's just, uh, it really just flows together the way that the signal, the sound signal goes. So like you go from the oscillators right here to the modulation oscillator to these noise and feedback oscillators, then it goes up here to the filters, then to the effects, and then to the amp and um, pre-effects, or post-effects, I mean. So it's really simple. It's just kind of like that, like a zigzag almost, down and up and down and up. Um, so that's like signal flow basic of uh, how you should go about it. You should do oscillators modulation oscillators, some feedback, like step one, step two, step three, and then filter step four, effect step five. Um, generally, if you're starting off, I'd say that's the way you want to go. Um, but let's go over what an oscillator actually is. So an oscillator makes the sound. It is what is producing the sound. So we have, if you click on this first box, make sure this is turned on by the blue light. Uh, you have all these wavetables. You have VA, basic, um, analog, electric, hybrid, digital, um, effects and chords. These are all your different wavetables. There's a bunch to go through. And uh, you could just choose one. Like, for example, I'll just choose rough mat one, math one, sorry. And now it's going to produce the sound if I hit a key. So, there we go. Uh, one thing to note is that if you double click on a knob or anything in Massive, it'll bring it back to its default value, which is really nice for like filters and whatnot. So oscillators make the sound. Remember that. Um, on all these, there are three oscillators in Massive. They all do the same thing. Uh, you can change the uh, wavetables between them, so you could have two at one time. 
So you could have three at one time, um, actually. Uh, let's go over what's inside here. So you might have noticed right away these boxes underneath. And what these boxes allow you to do in Massive is uh, you can put envelopes and you can put LFOs and whatnot onto these to control the knobs. You can also put macros and uh, those uh, macro, macro controls on here to control the position of your knob. So that's something to note. But let's go into these actual knobs and what this is. So here you have your pitch, and it's measured by semitones. 12 semitones is an octave, so if you go down 12, so negative 12 in pitch, that means you're one octave down. So if you're playing a C3, then you bring it down to 12, it'll sound like a C2, but you'll still be playing a C3 on your keyboard. And you also have these um, uh, smaller increments between there's like a hundred in between each one. And you could just drag that down like that, which would take forever, or you can click right here. You could also hold Alt and drag for octaves. So if I'm holding Alt, I'm gonna click and drag, and it goes up 12, up 12, up 12, or down 12. And just uh, double click to bring it back to zero. Another thing is that if you're detuned and you double click, it'll round it off. So like see how I'm at 6.75, if I double click on this uh, decimal number, it just rounds it to the uh, closest hole. So if it's 26, obviously it's closer to 6, so just double click, it goes to 6. And if you do it on the whole number, you it just goes back to 0. <clears throat> So this wavetable position is kind of like what I went over right away. Uh, it just warps between the two um, wavetables that are on here. So I'm going to bring up another synthesizer just to be an example. You don't need this. I hope this is the right one. Nope. I'm going to show you what a wavetable is. Um, visually, if I could remember how to use this synthesizer. So here we have a square wave. Here, I'm going to make a saw. I'll make this one a square and then the other one a saw, actually. So clear. Oh, geez, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just... I'm going to reset this. I don't use any other synth, really. Especially not this one. So I'll make this one into a square wave if I could okay now this represents our wavetable uh, square saw so now visually here's what the wavetable looks like uh, we have it Dang it, I screwed up. Whatever. Don't worry, I'll get it. Okay, here we go. I got this. Here we go. So now the wavetable, when you move the knob, see how it's morphing between the two wave or wave types? So it morphs in between. So that's what it is. I don't know how to use this synthesizer, so I'm sorry that I sucked at it. But that's visually what's happening. Now, you have this other knob, intensity knob, which affects the parameter spectrum, bend plus, bend minus plus, bend minus, or formant. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the intensity knob does or what the bend plus minus does, but uh, if you play with it, you can get some really cool sounds. 
So that's something to note. And I usually just stick to bend plus minus. But uh, if I have just a saw wave or a square wave, I just use spectrum and just have it all the way up. Now your amp knob, what that does is it controls the volume of this one oscillator. So you can have this one if you want to mix a little for your synthesizer. Let's say you have a square and it's down an octave. You can put it at 9 o'clock. Then you have a saw that's at one octave higher, filling out the uh, spectrum a little more. And you don't want them both to be all the way up. You can put one down. And it gives you a different sound. So that's something to know, is that using the amp, you can mix between your three oscillators. and. Um, all of these knobs are independent of each other, just in case I needed to specify that. So you can have different wavetables at different wavetable positions, intensities, all different, all random. And uh, you can have all these at uh, different locations. So just just randomly. Uh, that's just playing around so you can see that nothing is linked. Uh, what else? So those are the oscillators. All three oscillators are the exact same. So I really only, only need to go over one and now you have an understanding of all these three. One, two, and three. And you just turn them on by clicking this little switch. So let me actually put this on do not disturb. I don't care. So that's what an oscillator is. Again, an oscillator makes the sound. Now what a modulation oscillator does, this next um, module, it modulates your oscillator. I think I said that in my other tutorial, and nothing has changed. It's just, uh, just does that. So uh, your signal is going to go down, and then it's going to hit the modulation oscillator. And you have a pitch on your modulation oscillator, which acts the same. And then you have these four different um, things, modes, you can change. So you just click on them and that's, you can see the knobs changing and they all have different, um, different parameters. And you also notice these boxes. It's the same with every box. Um, you can use the boxes if you drag using the uh, little grab thing to do different to uh, modulate or to control the uh, parameter. So you have ring modulation, phase uh, modulation, position, and uh, filter. Filter, frequency, FM, whatever. Uh, so on here, you select one, and then you can choose the oscillator you want it to affect. So in our case, we only have one oscillator. We can click that we want our ring modulation to affect oscillator one by clicking on oscillator one for ring mod, and then we play, and I'm gonna move this knob. And you can see how that affects the sound. It's, I'm not, I'm not, um, 100% sure what it does, uh, ring modulation anyway. Um, phase modulation is kind of like um, massive frequency modulation thing. It's weird. So if we put it on one, you get to see it adds a lot of distortion. It's frequency modulation, so. I, 
I will say that phase modulation is the coolest one out of all of these, in my opinion. <laughs> So that's really how you get your sounds to sound more distorted and uh, more metallic-y almost. Distortion really adds metallic uh, features to a sound. Position. <laughs> Meh. Not 100% sure what it does. I think it works better on different... So different wavetables it works better on than others. Uh, you have uh, filter frequency modulation, which you have to have filters on. Let's say I have this low pass and then I have a high pass or something. If I put the uh, filter FM to one, so it's affecting filter one, pretty sure I can get this to work somehow. I was never good at using this. There we go. Okay, so that's that. So remember your modulation oscillator. You just click on one of these and then you can choose the oscillator you want it to affect. And make sure it's always on. And that's really all you need to know about these four oscillators. Uh, now I'm going to go into the noise oscillator and the feedback um, oscillator, quote unquote. So the noise oscillator, it generates noise. And you have all these different types of noise. You can play with them. Um, I actually use this one in my song Cities. Uh, it's just a nice, cool little generator type sound. And uh, noise, um, to use this, it's really nice to actually modulate the amp. Uh, one thing to note is that noise does not have pitch. So I'm going to play a scale. I just failed because I'm on my, lap board, my laptop keyboard. And so that's something to note. Uh, feedback, it just feeds back the uh, signal into itself. Um, you can change that when you go into the routing where it comes in, but that's a little bit more for later tutorials. So you don't really need to worry about this all that much. The last thing I'm going to say in this tutorial is, uh, the routing for your oscillators. So like I said, um, it's subtractive synthesis, which means it uses, um, filters and you can route what filter you want it to go to. So if I route these all to filter one, then the signal is going to go from the oscillators to filter one. And um, by default, that's all it's going to do. So we could have filter two on, and it just nothing will play because it's uh, set to filter one. So in the next tutorial, on this series, I'll be going over the filters and maybe the, yeah, the filters and uh, how they affect the sound. So I'll be going over this knob and what everything does. And hopefully you guys are learning something that you didn't know. Hopefully I can get into more of the sound design uh, aspect of it as opposed to just teaching you what everything does. and how it affects the sound. So I will see you guys next time. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and hopefully click on the button to go to the next tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.